What's up everybody? It's been a while since I've done an analysis video and with all of the recent DMCA takedowns that have been happening on Twitch, I haven't been able to save any of my VODs or clips. So it's been kind of difficult for me, but I realized that I actually just have all of these slippy files saved. Um, and so this VOD that we're going to be looking over is a VOD of me versus Laud that happened at a recent tournament called LRA Start 19. Um, it's actually a weirdly stacked tournament. Um, I played Laud in two sets. Uh, ended up 6 0 him, and I won four games on FD, two of which we'll look at in this analysis today. Um, and I think that these were some pretty good sets to go over. A lot of people ask me about Falco versus Peach, and a lot of people say, Ginger, I'm looking for a VOD to look at for this matchup. Who do you think I should watch? What sets do you have? And to complete, be completely real, um, I've played probably two or three Peach sets that I feel as though I'm proud of over the course of my career at this point. And none of them were ever recorded. Um, one of them was versus Laud at, I think, Smash Valley 7. Another one was Bladewise at Main Stage. That happened off stream as well. Um, so kind of unfortunately, all of these good Falco VODs have been lost in the ether. Um, but here I am presenting you with this one. And I kind of wanted to give some context because this is the second set of grands. Um, and I'm going to try to make this not terribly long. I'm not going to go into as much detail as I usually do when I do analysis. Um, sort of just a, a freestyle sort of thing, see what I think of the matchup. Um, but so in the first set, there are rules that I follow for the matchup that I reminded myself of before I played. Um, number one is that this matchup is just a battle for stage position. Um, I say just a battle per stage position. There's a lot more nuance to it, obviously. It's a, it's a full matchup within melee. But if Falco is in the corner, especially if he's on a stage with no top platform, like FD or Pokemon Stadium, the only stages that we actually played over the course of the two sets, then he has a pretty difficult time getting out. And if he gets hit, he gets put immediately into an edge guard situation, which obviously can be a huge detriment to Falco. Uh, Peach, on the other hand, Instead of just dying immediately as you send her off the stage by hitting her in the corner, um, she is just at a massive disadvantage as she's either on the ledge, recovering, or in the corner. Um, Falco has great options to punish essentially anything that she can do from the corner, so a lot of this matchup is just based on either building percent and then somehow getting a kill, whether it be a back air, jab, up smash, shine off the top, you know, back air, you know, shine bear, something like that. Um, or you just sort of, you know, fight for stage position the whole time and you build damage that way. You're not getting combos, you're just forcibly putting her on the edge over and over again, winning these 90-10 situations for yourself and slowly just winning the game. Um, and that's sort of the process I like to take in this matchup. I sort of like to play this rinse repeat, okay, she's on the ledge, she's in the corner, I'll hit her back off, laser her double jump, laser her float, force her back to the ledge and just kind of repeat. Um, but I also have some lot specific things that I was thinking about when going into these sets, um, and specifically into the first set. Um, Lod is a very, very, very grounded Peach. He likes to play out of his power shields, out of, you know, his take laser options occasionally. He's, he's a little bit more on the power shield side of things than the take laser side of things, which I don't necessarily blame him for. Getting hit by a laser as Peach is, uh, isn't necessarily the best thing in the world because you can't move out of the way as quickly as maybe like Fox or Marth or Captain Falcon would, right? Um, so he tries to power shield a lot and he tries to power shield down smash a lot of approaching aerials. And the thing about Falco is when you see him dash jump at you, you can sort of just predict the timing and choose to power shield, whether it be, you know, you're gonna attempt to power shield a laser or an aerial. Um, but power shield down smash, here's kind of the secret thing is the Power Shield Down Smash doesn't actually work on low aerials. Um, and also Power Shield Down Smash just doesn't work on projectiles because you can't Power Shield into moves uh, when you're Power Shielding a projectile. Um, so low aerials and approaching lasers were two of the things that I really felt were gonna be really important during these two sets. Um, and funnily enough, during the first set, even within the first game, I can tell that Laud had taken some time to think about the matchup and maybe even practiced a couple scenarios um, to better avoid lasers and also just set up a good float height. Um, what I mean by a good float height, by the way, is just a float height that's around the side platform height that's right above Falco's short hop aerial range, but right below his full hop aerial range. It makes it very difficult for him to attack. Um, and he was attempting to set this up pretty constantly. 
Um, I think he probably could have done a better job of getting there immediately and not waiting for me to shoot the first laser. Um, but instead he would like shield laser, then jump and set up that flow height, which again, I think is something that he um, could improve at still, but is something that I didn't expect him to necessarily bring to the table in this set because I, I, the last few times I had played him, he, does, he definitely didn't do that very much. Um, but luckily for me, um, I know the matchup well enough to where, you know, if Peach is floating at this height, I have a lot of like contingency plans. I'm like, okay, well, I want to punish Peach on the ground. I want her to force her to the corner. But if she sets up this float height, there are a lot of things that we could do. And I won't just talk about them all. I'll showcase these as we go into it. Um, but you'll see he actually ends up setting up that float height quite a bit. Um, and some of the things that I do to uh, even prevent him from getting up to the float height are some of the things that help me win this set. Um, so that being said, those are sort of my thoughts going into it. We strike to Pokemon Stadium, Frozen Stadium first stage. Um, kind of interesting, like I said, no top platform, which might be beneficial for him. He can keep me in the corner a little bit better. Um, low ceiling, which might help me get kills off the top a little bit. Um, large horizontal range might help him set up float heights or pull turnips. So there's some, there's some give and takes within this stage, but I think it's pretty Falco favored. So we have Falcon versus Peach. I know he likes to pull a turnip at the very beginning of every game, which is why I try to shoot this fast fall laser right here. Doesn't end up preventing him from actually being able to get the turnip out, but that's fine. Um, you see here, I'm actually using a lot of double jumps attempting to predict him uh, dash attacking underneath me. It's something that he really took advantage of when we were playing the first set, so I was hardcore looking out for that. Okay, here I'm trying to scrap a little bit too hard. He gets a really nice read with the run up shield grab. Um, Okay, that was really nice by me. Laser Nair taking Peach out of the air is one of the largest openings that you can get in this matchup. Nice double shine, but do you see this pressure right here? All I want, I do double shine late aerial to cover if he holds shield, but he ends up rolling to the corner. Um, this is great for me. I shoot a laser, I do a forward tilt, now he's on the ledge. Um, and you see, I'm just trying to force him back into the corner. Consistently running back to center stage, trying to push him out over into the corner. He actually moves there himself. I do approaching lasers to beat the float, and then I actually get it down there right there, which is great. Um, okay, do a little full hop mix up there. Low laser, high laser to catch the jump out of shield. Low laser, high laser again. Um, and you see me doing all of these low laser, high lasers. So it's literally three in a row. So this is something I should talk about. So if Peach shields or takes the laser and then attempts to jump out of shield, um, a lot of the time she is able to get past the second laser if she's fast enough. This is difficult to do. Um, so since it's so difficult, I'm essentially execution testing him in a way where I say, okay, I'm gonna do the low laser and then I'll do the high laser immediately afterwards. And if you can move fast enough, you might be able to set up the float height. But if you're not, I'm gonna be able to react to the laser hitting, react to you not being able to move up quickly enough. And then I'll be able to get a really good situation for myself. Um, so just to back it up, um, low laser, high laser there, he avoids one, then I do low laser, high laser here, he's already in the air, right? So this is actually a little bit too high of a float height, but I think he just wanted to get out of the corner. But like I said, I have some contingency plans, right? So full dash back, turn around, full hop, laser, fast fall, laser, get to the side platform. Getting to the side platform is a really safe way to be able to contest Peach when she's around this float height. Um, a lot of times you're not going to be getting a ton off of it, you see me doing the same thing right here. Um, a lot of times you're not going to get a ton off of it, but you at least reset to the point where you wait till she her float is over with, and then she falls, and she's going to be forced to interact with you once again. Okay, a little bit of a fade back down air here. Okay, up smash out of shield because I noticed the back air was a little too high. Okay, I do that shine turnaround laser off the side platform, a little bit of a timing mix-up. Again, those full hop lasers attempt to contest the space. I see him maneuvering forward with his float height there. I try to protect myself, but a good mix-up from him. Nice. So again, uh, I one of the things that I have on Laud is that I know he likes to roll a lot. Um, this is not really the hardest read in the world because Peach's roll is really useful within the matchup and something that she kind of has to do a lot of the time. Um, so I sort of cover everything that uh, isn't roll, and then I soft cover the roll still. That's sort of the way I've been doing my uh, shield pressure. Um, this is actually a situation that we're going to be talking about a little bit later, um, where Lod likes to hang out here. We'll go into it once I actually hit him. But a uh, good recovery from Lod. He gets back, pulls a turn up here. Um, so I like to go very aggressive on Peach when she has a turn up. 
And in general, what Peaches do is they jump off stage, just like Laud did there, and he, they end up in the corner. You just don't want to get reversal in that situation, because like I described earlier, you just have her in the corner and it's really, really good for you. Um, so invincibility essentially equals stage position for free. Okay, getting a little weird there. Jab up smash, kind of silly. Um, I actually, I think I do two jab up smashes this game. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily think that's how you're supposed to look for kills in the matchup. Um, short hop up air is a great way to contest the side platforms essentially on any stage. Um, essentially, this forward air could have just been a back air and air. really doesn't matter. I'm just boxing her out, making sure that she can't land, land on the stage for free. So that way, I, again, just force her to the ledge. So she's on ledge here. Couple back air timings. Back up laser. Nice. So low laser, high laser once, once again catches the jump. Okay. Good full hop air out of the corner by him. Nice by me. Using the side platform for pressure mix-ups. Um, using the side platform for pressure mix-ups can be a little scary because uh, Peach's full hop nair is just such a good tool to contest anybody above them. Peach's nair comes out frame 3 um, and has an amazing hitbox, so it's something that you do have to look out for, but something I was willing to uh, kind of play against. Another up smash, kind of cheeky. Uh, again, I wouldn't necessarily suggest it. <laughs> Another champ up smash. I was just going wild with him. Um, but he's at a percent where laser jab, as long as you're spaced well, or if you recognize that they're not shielding, can be really good. Um, if you're spaced incorrectly, your opponent should actually be able to react to you jabbing and just grab you. Um, and Peach's grab is one of the largest openings she can get in the matchup, so you have to be really careful about that. Um, this again, these high lasers I did here, was kind of a read on something I noticed from set one, which is that Laud doesn't really like to contest on the ground when Falco's on the ledge. He likes to set up a float height. Um, kind of above low short hop lasers or a ledge dash or something like that, which can be really effective, but I was going for the high lasers to kind of beat that. A couple sequences of West Ball's pressure. Again, he's forced to the ledge. Again, I just have him in a terrible spot. Um, the full hop back here rising wasn't a great idea. I do it again and I actually die. Um, I much prefer to be above Peach descending as opposed to... Um, as opposed to going up at Peach with a rising aerial when you're kind of contesting that spot. So I actually wanted to turn around laser here, which would have caught him. Uh, but what's really funny is that I do this exact same pressure sequence and I actually get the short hop laser as opposed to the full hop laser. Ends out working great for me. Um, I get a little greedy here. I thought I could chase down uh, the aerial movement. Nice. Again, the read on the roll. Um, this is really, really important here. So um, you might think that like this grab was a huge read. But something I want you guys to understand right now is that when Peach is holding a turnip, she's very, very limited. She cannot jab or down smash, which are, or immediate nair. She can float then nair, but she can't immediate nair. She has the turnip in hand, um, and she also, sorry, cannot dash attack. So jab, down smash, dash attack. Those are all things that Falco should be pretty afraid of all of the time. But since she doesn't have those things, in reality, what does Peach even have here, right? Like, I, I have no idea. Um, she would have to shield drop float aerial if she even wanted to do an aerial um, because she would throw the turn if she even attempted to do a different one. Um, so right here, I'm just like, okay, well, he's going to try and shield to protect himself because he doesn't have any quick attacks to, to actually hit me with. Um, but that's why when Peach has a turnip, I like to go aggressive. Um, I chase down the aerial momentum there. That's something that I won't necessarily talk about right now. Again, using side platforms to kind of try and keep myself safe, but keep up the pressure. Um, right here, he essentially has no uh, options. One thing that you have to pay attention to in this matchup is um, the options that Peach has. So look at this really quickly. So I'm paying attention to the resources all the time. So I saw the double jump, I saw him set up the float, and I nared him out of it, right? So this is a very, very, very high value nair that I did. You might think, okay, I nared him, I don't get a combo. A Avery, how do I kill Peach? I, I can't combo her, blah, 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 blah. Well, you just deplete her of all of her resources and continue positional pressure. So he has no double jump, he has no float. So I assume he's going to air dodge. I cover it very nicely, right? Now he's forced to up B. Hit him out of the up B, get damage. Laser him so he can't go high right here. I force him back to the ledge. Um, one thing here as well is that Peach actually doesn't have her float as she grabs the ledge here, unless she had, like, actually had her float beforehand. So um, she's extra limited at the moment. He actually does tournament winner fair with no float, which is crazy, 
and I end up getting hit by it, which is um, a pretty big blunder by me. But uh, in all reality, like that was a very, very good play for me up until that point. A third jab up smash. <laughs> Again, I would not necessarily condone the use of up smash. Uh, I think it's a little cheeky in the matchup, but I had a good lead and I had some reads on his movement and was able to connect some jabs. So I think it was kind of worth. Um, but the next match I want to go over here, uh, let's see if I can just close this real quick. Uh, next match I want to go over here is the first match on FD of the second set of grands here. Um, so again, he likes to pull a lot of turnips on the start, so I try to pressure that situation. I even do a second approaching laser, which I actually think is pretty good, because like I said, you want to maintain some aggression in this matchup. Um, unfortunately, there was so much distance between us that he was able to get a turnip throw out, um, and there I actually shot too high of a laser, which made that kind of silly. Um, again, I'm sort of trying to scrap too much. I, I don't like me holding down a ton. I'm also jumping over him. Uh, this was genius by a lot, by the way. So this is something Armada's talked about. So a lot of people would just C-stick throw this turnip right here to try and send it out as quickly as possible. But what I was going to do is I was going to immediate double jump, no fast fall. So I was hoping that the turnip would pass by me, um, right? So I was hoping that the turnip would just go past me. It, like if I fast fell, I'd obviously hit the turnip, even if he C-stick through it, um, which is like the strong fast throw. But uh, I did the no fast fall thinking that, oh, the turnip will just be past me. But he actually did the soft just A press throw. And so the turnip is actually moving slower. So it covers this space for longer. Um, any peach mains out there should kind of take that. I think it's very, very good. Um, and that's just a simple and clean edge guard. Good by him. I was scrapping too much, got pushed to the corner. And like I said, if this was a battle for stage position, he got me into the corner, killed me off of like one interaction. Um, that early nair was pretty decent because I push him to the ledge regardless. Um, there's a situation where, again, I'm trying to jab but unspaced. Um, and I actually get grabbed. And keep in mind, this could have been a kill for him. This could have been very, very bad for me, just rewinding really quickly. I do this jab, he reacts, grabs me, and I could have just died. This could have been peach chain grab, hits the edge guard, could have been really bad. Um, laser forward tilt, uh, kind of risky. Catch him a little off guard though. Let's see the sharking, I try to put myself above him. Ah, uh, yeah, so one of the adaptations I was really afraid of after the first set is that I was doing a lot of laser into high laser or low laser into high laser, expecting him to jump out of shield or after getting hit by the uh, the first laser. Uh, and one of the things that Peach should be able to do to beat that really effectively is do take laser dash attack. Because you'll take the first laser and you'll go underneath the second approaching laser. Um, and for Falco to fully take advantage of his frame advantage and prevent Peach from getting in the air, um, he should actually do an approaching high laser as his second laser. Um, so if I'm approaching into the dash attack on FD, I could just die for it. Um, and that's essentially what happened here. It wasn't a low laser into high laser, but I did shoot the high laser expecting him to jump, but instead he did the dash attack. Um, you don't have to play that mix up all the time. Here I kind of flub. Um, you don't have to play that mix up all the time because obviously it's pretty risky on this stage to be doing that. Um, but if you have the read, I think it's pretty effective. Um, and then even doing the low laser and a high laser and baiting out the dash attack can be really, really good for you. Um, so now I'm down four stocks to two, read a roll, which like I said, I kind of had a read on his rolls. Approached him from the wrong angle there. Um, and what you see here is I was actually trying to preemptively full hop, expecting him to jump and set up a float height to pressure me in the corner. Um, so I wanted a full hop so I could do a laser around this height to stop that really bad float height, right? But he actually didn't jump. He just maintained his position on the ground, which like who knows whether or not that was correct, but that's sort of where my brain was. Um, I ended up trying to salvage the situation by shooting a kind of low laser since that was the only thing that was on my mind. Um, but he ends up getting this pretty devastating dash attack grab um, going underneath the high-ish laser again. So I DI towards center stage. Um, one small thing for all the Falco mains out there is that forward throw is not reactable but up throw is. So what I'm actually doing, if you could see my inputs right now, uh, right here, I think he's actually gonna go for, yeah, regrab is I'm actually holding back to prevent me getting forward thrown off stage. So I'm holding back and up, 
and then as soon as I see the up throw, I'm DIing towards center stage, right? And here I don't DI towards center stage, I'm trying to mix him up. But I know he's just gonna go for continued re-grabs at that point. Full DI away sort of prevents uh, him from getting a large punish there. Uh, come down on top of him, get that kill, which was pretty nice for me. Now let's see this right here. Again, full hop laser, fast fall laser. Full hop aerial, I'm sort of just at high percent banking on some reads. Um, side B from ledge is just a very legitimate mix-up. Uh, people need to legitimize this a little bit more. Uh, people always call it cheesy, but if your opponent has already swung right here and you want a safe way to get to center stage, then you should do the side B. Uh, the, the thing is, like I said, this matchup is a battle for stage position. So if you are wanting to get safe stage position and your opponent overcommits, side B is just a fantastic way to do it. Um, again, laser nair out of the air, huge opening. Um, again, rising aerial into her, wouldn't suggest it a ton of the time, and a great read by him. Um, so I'm down three stocks to one. I've played some decently high risk mix-ups with uh, sort of not playing around dash attack very well. Um, even right there wasn't totally safe. Ended up messing up a fast fall there, which forced me to uh, mess up some continued inputs afterwards. Power shield down smash, like I said earlier, I like to be doing late aerials there. I was doing a high aerial. Um, Nice. Here I was actually ready. Um, so this might have been a situation earlier, right, where I had shot a laser and here he is going to run underneath me to get a dash attack. But instead, I actually get this down air on top of him. So it shows I'm paying attention, which is nice. Laser dash tag. You see me, um, sorry, not laser dash tag. Laser dash dance and then I'm shielding. So he's at a percent where up smash out of shield will kill, and he's been banking a lot of his neutral game on dash attacks. So I consider it pretty good risk reward to just shield and stay mobile, because if he does do the dash attack, you just up smash out of shield. If he doesn't, you can wave dash out and play a pretty solid mix up. Um, laser forward tilt, especially at this percent, is going to be really difficult for her to deal with. Again, just wave dash back, and I actually baited it out. Um, up smash reaching there. I do think sharking with up smash can be pretty good sometimes. Um, this is actually funny, so up being here, I actually up beat at this angle down over to the left the last time we played in the first set. Um, so I go this direction, which I think kind of messed him up. Um, not a great up tilt there. Late approaching laser, makes him miss his uh, power shield, full hop out of the corner. Okay, so let's think here for a second, right? Um, he does not have double jump at this moment. We need to pay attention to the resources. So here... He double jumps up into the laser, and I laser down tilt him. So I know he has his float available, but I know he cannot change the vertical spacing without up being. So that gives me a lot more of an incentive to try and punish him and go upwards. Um, he ends up doing a pretty good air dodge on the way down. Not a ton for me to do. Again, there's me playing around the dash attack, which is nice. Actually double jumping above um, as I short hop in. Laser forward tilt, he does have float here. Let me just look at the situation one more time. So I hit her off stage. So, okay, here's the really interesting thing about this situation. So if we're paying attention to resources, he has double jumped, he has floated. So he's on the ledge, and he has his double jump back, because that's what you get when you grab the ledge. But he does not have his float back. So you see that he does this hack stash, and what the hack stash does is it gives him his float back. So here, he double jumps into the laser forward tilt. And some might think, okay, this guy's just dead, right? He's way too low. Even if he up easy, he's not going to live. Um, but he still had his float, which was good by him to do the hack stash, something that you guys should pay attention to. Um, I shine stall, or not shine stall, sorry, a uh, firebird stall. Get a shine back air. It's a rising back air, but a late nair by me. I thought this was kind of interesting. Um, get this nice little late nair. Bam! That's like as low as possible, actually. That might have been a plus zero nair. I think it was. Dang, look at that. Um, so it was a really good time to get the nair. Again, I'm trying to play safe with my back air. Jab in the corner since he's at such a high percent. And now this is the first instance where this comes up. I have this read on Laud where a lot of Peaches play this situation very slightly differently based on their horizontal positioning. Some people will just like chill until you whiff. Some people will go a little bit more aggressive and fade in earlier. Some people play the like mid height or um, like the, the mid range. Laud plays it a little too close as long as you're willing to drift all the way out. Um, a lot of people want to just zone. I'll show you really quick. A lot of people just want to zone this area right here with a back air, thinking it'll catch Peach if they move in. But, um, so Lod's just waiting for that. He wants to be close enough to where he can pounce on people whiffing right here, but he's too close if you just drift outwards into him. Um, 
And that ends up actually mattering quite a bit, even as the set goes on. Um, so I'm avoiding him very well. The backflip back here was excellent for me. Lots of... Uh, this is just great to um, kind of create space between you and the Peach. So, bam, just like that. Really difficult for her to contest. Back air, shine, playing the scramble very well. Um, again, rising into him, probably not the best decision right there. Okay, chasing him on the ground. Low laser, high laser, again, catching him, jumping at a shield. Let's just look at this really quickly. So again, low laser, he shields. Approaching high laser, catches him out of the air. Now, if he dash attacked me here, something to think about is that dash attack might not have comboed given the percent that I was at. So this might have actually been valuable risk reward given the stage, right? Um, so I get underneath him, react with up tilt. I also saw his double jump. Keep that in mind. I saw him double jump right there. We'll look at it one more time. So bam, if we look really closely, he actually double jumps into that. You can see the ring right here. So um, I know he only has a few options left. I full hop up to bait him to swing and then I punish him for it. Um, I actually think that's a pretty underused thing is that Falcos can just either short hop or full hop in the matchup um, and bait people to swing on the way down. I do the same thing against Marth to bait side Bs or falling fares or counters and stuff like that. Um, and I think it's very useful. Um, so the last match we're going to take a look at here is the last game on FD. So it was a pretty com big comeback by me. That was a three-shot comeback um, in the last match. So again, <laughs> this is so silly. So last time, remember I did the laser approaching. Laser got hit by the turnip. Well, I knew he was going to throw the turnip this time, so I just reflected back at him, which I think is just kind of silly and fun. Um, Again, not doing the terrible lasers where I'm shooting them too high on my way down from the, the double jumps, I think is a really good adjustment that I made there. Uh, even this one is very low. Definitely going to catch a dash attack here if he even tries to do one. Um, good power shield by him, but one of the things that I think is really important to keep in mind is that I reacted to myself getting power shielded here, and I actually dash back out of the way of his attack. Um, keep that in mind is that that's something that you can always do if there's distance between you and your opponent as they power shield. Okay, just trying to do some corner pressure. Kind of expected him to roll. Really good read by him catching the jump back there. Um, just good stuff on him. Forward throw here. So forward throw knocks down every character at 37% or at least sends them into tumble. Um, there are certain DIs where characters are forced to tech and certain DIs they can choose where some of them can jump out before they hit the ground. Um, so Peach DI'd away here, which kept her very low to the ground, so she's required to tech. So if he teched in place here, I would have gotten a very juicy opening. Um, but yeah, if you see here, I literally have him at 38. And like I said, forward throw knocks down every character at 37, so it can be valuable. So forward throw here. I read the tech in place, he ends up tech rolling in. He still has a turnip, I try to go pretty aggressive. I was gonna shine the turnip back just to be silly again. Um, ah, reach with the back air. Good spacing by him. Good combo by him thus far. Let's see what happens. Okay, he actually misses the up smash. I did some decently ambiguous DI, but a very nice read slash reaction on the up B there. So I'm down four stocks to two again. Catch him on invincibility. Pretty good combo by me. Nice, I force him to the ledge with that laser. He misses the hack stash. So again, the reason why he wants to hack stash here is because he's already burned his float when he grabs the ledge. He does not have float anymore now that he's on the ledge. So he tries to refresh it and get the, the float back, but he actually messes up the hack stash. Um, so I dash dance out of the way. I double jump. He does a dash attack under me. I do a down air. Again, small positional things. I force him to the ledge. He's in a bad spot. Get him to roll. Again, he set up a good float height, but I'm dash dancing around it, setting up my lasers, trying to maintain some level of uh, safety here. End up scrapping with him in a pretty bad way. And look at this, he tries to style me so hard. That's crazy. Um, again, not great jabs, not great nair. I'm getting a little lazy. I'm up. I just won five games in a row. Um, so Peach Chain Grab should never result in you immediately dying. There should always be either an edge guard or a DI slash double jump mix up that uh, has to happen. Just know that you're not always dead when Peach grabs you. I also got a little lucky there. So essentially two SDs for him are definitely helping me out. Um, so this is what I like to call the peace out laser. I think it's very, very good in the matchup and also just any matchup. If you, if you have space already between you and your opponent and you want to disengage safely, doing a full dash turnaround laser is a great way to 
cut off the grounded avenue of your opponent's uh, kind of threat, right? Like he can't dash tag it because there's a laser in the way, right? And I'm also creating the space between us and trying to get out of a scramble situation where I might get nared or jab knocked down or down smashed or grabbed or anything like that. I'm just disengaging. Then I can set up, you know, laser dash dance, kind of bait him into doing something. I end up double jumping because I felt pressured when I was in the corner. And he ends up waiting for it, which is really nice by him. Okay. So right here, again, he's floating very close to the stage. Actually, ASDI down a uh, power shield jab. Not a great nair timing there by me. That's fine. Again, let me just look at another small thing here that you guys should take. Is that I end up shooting a laser. There's distance between us. So I'm able to react to this laser happening and dash back out of the way. Instead of just getting power shield laser nair. Like a lot of people would have in that situation. Again, this is terrifying to me. Because this was the big adjustment I was afraid of him making this set, is I shoot low laser and then kind of a mid slash high laser here. Um, but he does take laser dash attack, and I'm like, oh no, this is just awful. Luckily, I get out with a, a get up attack. I jump past him with that one. I really should be a little bit more careful now that he's made that adjustment. But you can see how like he's not jumping as much as he was in the earlier games. Um, so there, I was baiting out the dash attack. I ended up double jumping a little uh, too late there. Oh, I'm just trying to play it kind of safe. Jab, forward smash, covering all the space in the corner made that pretty safe. Um, short hop back air, not terribly great in that situation. Jab, maybe could have up smashed. So again, look at this. He is again wanting me to whiff a back air, predicting him moving forward, but instead I go and I attack him at the spot that he actually is. Um, it is very important to recognize where your peach is spacing horizontally against you. Um, so again, avoiding bad situations, double jump over. I try to read a, uh, a jump float out there with this full hop, by the way. You do not want to attempt a shine or an up tilt here, because what Peach does is that she just floats out of the combo here. And if you do actually uh, do an up tilt or a shine, she just whip punishes you. Um, so good catch on the, the roll right there by me. Take his double jump, force him to the ledge. I finally cover a... Solid get up attack. He finally does the dash attack into me, expecting me to do an approaching laser. I shield it, down air at a shield, late fair nair, get a laser for good damage. And again, this is the set ender, a huge thing. Probably one of the biggest reasons why I was able to make this comeback is that he is just floating in this space and I can drift back and I can hit him. So I get him with this down air, I end the set, 6-0 against Laud, that's the victory of, uh, what was it, LRA start 19. But legitimately, I think this is one of the better Falco versus Peach sets that I've played. Obviously, um, when I had the lead and when I was up so many games, I did some kind of wacky things like shining the turn up back or, you know, not really playing as safely or as disciplined as I might have needed to around some of the dash attacks. Um, but regardless, I hope that you guys found a lot of useful information within this analysis. Let me know if you guys have any thoughts or comments on my play or Laud's play. I, I think um, even if Laud wants to improve, I, I absolutely am not trying to like rag on him for anything that he did within the set. I actually think he's such a good player, and he is disproportionately bad against Falco. I, I legitimately think so. I think he is such an incredible player, but I think he has so much room to grow within the matchup. So I think even if he watched this, I think it would be very beneficial to him. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you later. See ya.